I made a video a long time ago, which was to talk about emulators. You don't do that. You don't do that. And how it wasn't so great. Suffice to say, that video is only funny to me and an internet friend of mine. His YouTube channel is Gaming Tank. It's gotten a lot of views, a lot of attention. Yeah. Ten years later, ten years later, Gaming Tank still does that. He still does that. Fast forward 10 years later, things have changed, emulation has gotten better. It is on phones now and we got a decent Bluetooth peripheral support for them. If you have a brand new computer that has parts in it from the last two years, you can easily emulate anything PlayStation 2, GameCube, and everything that came before those two consoles. Even with new mods that emerged recently, it has made console gaming even more exciting and fast. I am talking about large expandable optical memory and flash memory storage for old consoles. Again, everything with the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and everything made before them can use expandable memory storage in remarkable ways. It can all be copied to a single micro SD card. Stuff that beats pulling a game case off the shelf, placing the card or disc in the console, and pressing the power button. Physical media can even stay on the shelf now, since an entire library can be organized onto one single gaming device. In 2018, I was just obsessed with getting the best video signals for the NES, Genesis, Super Nintendo, and Sega Saturn. With use of SCART, S-Video, HDMI, and component modifications and upscalers, now I hardly care. Whatever is quicker and faster, which is the point of this video. Quicker and faster. How can you be gaming quicker and faster? Well, it would help if you could sit down, start the game, and pick up right where you left off. These are all new advancements that make me feel like having a piece of furniture for my video game consoles is quite irrelevant. When the piece of furniture doesn't have to exist, if not just for a display stand for the old consoles. I really don't have to fiddle with a mess of tangled wires consisting of half a dozen power cords, controller wires, power strips, and AV cables to a single or multiple displays. Everything can be on one computer or phone with one desk, one monitor, maybe a few different choices and peripherals depending on the genre. Unfortunately for myself, I feel I need to have these game systems out, hooked up, and ready to go at a moment's notice. I made my own piece of furniture, partly despite IKEA, but to fit where I need it. And hold six different video game consoles, all ready to go. Don't get me wrong, it's tremendously cool to sit down at a computer with a big monitor, one generic controller, and pick any game from a console to play in moments. But a part of me, I need the old consoles set up in working order and to hold the physical media to simply look at and hold before I put it away or place it in the console. When was the last time you handled a perfectly immaculate jewel case for Dreamcast or PlayStation 1? Japanese Sega Saturn jewel cases, anyone? I think for me, it is to remind myself I still have this stuff. It is still valuable and it is still working. It is comforting, it's relieving, and I feel pretty good afterwards. Should I bring up the fact video game consoles are being made without the need for physical media? Be it the little game cartridges for Nintendo Switch? or the Blu-ray discs for Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. I understand it's super convenient to have everything digital. It saves on space so you can appear more neat and organized. Let's not forget marketing and advertising is all to convince you to buy something you don't really need. The corporations like Microsoft and Sony aren't your friends. You don't own the digital media. You just bought the authorization to run the digital copy on your gaming device. As long as you have an online connection, the gaming device, and access to your account. At the end of the day, digital media is worthless when it reaches the end user. But then there's the thing to point out that CD-ROMs, DVD-ROMs, and even cartridges don't last forever. But the contacts on cartridges wearing out or the disc rot, your PlayStation 2 disc can be scratched up by a faulty disc drive one day. For the time being, all my stuff works well and plays well, like brand new actually. I have my silly furniture to organize my video game stuff. If anything should change where the disc fails or the console fails in some sort of way, there are things I can do to solve the problem. There might be a day where I'm using a lot of custom parts. I'll make do. 